In this session, we are going to deal some of the questions and answers related to the chapter light. So, we will be dealing the different questions regarding the 1 mark, 2 mark, 3 mark and 5 mark sessions. So, we have to answer accordingly to the marks so that it will be able to convey in the best manner. So, first question, define power of a lens and write its SI unit. So, what do you mean by the power of a lens? We know it's the ability to converge or diverge the rays of light which is falling on it. And what was the main equation of power? Power of a lens is equal to the reciprocal of the focal length of the lens. And the SI unit of power is diopter. Second question, show the direction of light after reflection. You can see from the figure, AB marks the incident ray, isn't it? And the arrow marks are being marked in the downward direction. So what will be happening after reflection? That is a question. You can see the AB notes the incident ray of light. And what will be the reflected ray? The reflected ray will be along the same direction that is from B to A. It is because the incident ray is passing through center of curvature. So after reflection, it will be also tracing the same path but from B to A. So AB marks the incident ray of light and BA marks the reflected ray of light. So to mark the BA as a reflected ray of light, you will be marking the arrow in the opposite direction which you have marked for AB. So third question, identify the nature of the mirror and mention two characteristics of the image formed when magnification equals plexus. So what do you mean by plexus magnification? That means the size of the image formed will be six times the size of the object. And what does the plus means? For that we need to understand how the sign conventions are being formed, isn't it? So the, here the image will be erect when we denote it by the sign plus. So m equal to plus this means the size of the image formed will be six times the size of the object and the image will be erect. And such an image which is formed will be in the case of a concave mirror when the object is placed between the focus. Next question, when a ray of light goes from one medium to another, there is the reform options given, always a change in its speed as well as direction, no change in speed and direction, a change in speed but no change in direction, fourth option is a change in direction but constant speed. We know that when a ray of light goes from one medium to another, there will be change in the speed as well as in the direction. So the correct option is answer A. Next question, the power of a lens is minus 4 diopter. D represents diopter, isn't it? So what is the nature of the lens? So this is in case of a lens, isn't it? So here the minus sign denotes that it is corresponding to a concave lens. Next one, a lens X has focal length 20 cm and lens Y has focal length 40 cm. Which lens would you select to obtain a more convergent beam of light? We know the basic equation connecting power of a lens and focal length, isn't it? That is P equals 1 by F. So from the equation it is clear that when focal length is less, the power will be more. So thus a lens of less focal length will be having more power of converging a parallel beam of light. So from the question it's clear that lens X which is having a focal length of 20 cm will be able to obtain a more convergent beam of light. Now next question is a ray of light PQ as you can see from the figure is incident on a glass lab. We have to write the values of angle of incidence and angle of refraction for this ray of light. And from this figure you can see that angle I or angle of incidence is 0 degree. That is according to the law of refraction of light we have the basic equation as sin I by sin R equals N, isn't it? I means angle of incidence, R means angle of refraction and N means 
it is refractive index. So, from the basic equation you will get sin r equals sin i by n. We rearrange the equation such a way because we have already the angle of incidence, isn't it? That is why in order to substitute that we arrange the equation so. So, sin r equals sin i by n. But we know angle of incidence is equal to 0. So, sin 0 by n that equals 0. So, angle of incidence as well as angle of refraction for this ray of light will be 0 when we substitute in the equation according to the law of refraction. So, the next question is an object of size 2 cm is placed at 25 centimeter in front of a concave mirror. If the magnification produced by the mirror is 4, what is the size of the image? We know the basic equation of magnification that magnification represented by small m equals height of image to height of the object, isn't it? So, m equals h dash by h. So, what are the quantities that is given in the equation already? You know that the magnification is being given us for already and it is also given that height of the object is that is of 2 centimeter, isn't it? So, now we have to find what is magnification relating to that. So, m equals h dash by h. So, two quantities are given m and h. So, the third quantity we can find, isn't it? So, rearrange the equation you will get h dash equals m into h. The magnification is already given us 4 and height of the image is sorry height of the object is already given us that of 2 centimeter. So, that from that we will get 4 into 2 centimeter equals height of the image that is equals 8 centimeter. Moving on to the next question for the same angle of incidence 45 degree the angle of refraction in two transparent media 1 and 2 is 20 degree and 30 degree respectively. Out of 1 and 2 which medium is optically denser and why? We know the equation connecting the refractive index and angle of incidence and angle of refraction is n equals sin i by sin r. Here we are given two different cases for 1 and 2, isn't it? So, we need to form two different equations. So, n1 equals sin i by sin r1 and n2 equals sin i by sin r2. Now, we need to find a ratio between these two. So, n1 by n2 will give sin r2 by sin r1 because the same angle of incidence is applied for both cases only the angle of refraction is different. So, they will cancel, isn't it? So, n1 by n2 given sin r2 by sin r1 which equals greater than 1. So, from that proportionality we will get n1 greater than n2. So, from that we will infer that medium 1 will be optically denser than medium 2. So, for a medium which is having more refractive index that will be more optically denser. So, n1 greater than n2 implies that medium 1 will be having more optical density than medium 2. So, next question, incident ray AB falls on a lens. As you can see from the figure, a ray AB is falling on the lens and the refracted ray is being shown as BC. So, we are asked what is the lens. So, we can see the ray AB is being falling and it will diverge along BC after passing through the lens, isn't it? So, what is a diverging lens? It is in case of a concave lens, isn't it? So, we can easily identify that this lens will be a diverging or concave lens. Now, moving on to the three mark questions. We need to identify different formulas and different descriptive questions regarding the chapter. So, such a question. What is refraction and state loss of refraction? And explain the refraction through glass lab. We know that refraction is being explained through different common phenomena of our life, isn't it? 
but here we are asked what is the refraction formulas different laws related to that and what is the basic definition of refraction so what was refraction it is the phenomenon of change in the direction of light is it when does the direction of light have the change that is when it passes from one transparent medium to another so we can simply define refraction as phenomenon of change in direction of light when it passes from one transparent medium to another so what were the laws of refraction there are basically two laws the first one is that the incident ray refracted ray and normal to the interface of two transparent media at the point of incidence will lie in the same plane and the second one is the basic formula which is also known as snell's law of refraction that is n equals sin i by sin r where n equals the refractive index sin i means sin of angle of incidence and what is sin r sin r means sin of angle of refraction so snell's law of refraction states that the ratio of sin of angle of incidence to sin of angle of refraction will be a constant that is n that will be for a given light of color and a given pair of medium so i equals angle of incidence and r equals angle of refraction and the constant value is called as refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first medium so now we are asked the second part of the question to explain the refraction through rectangular glass slab and now for that we need to consider a rectangular glass slab as shown in the figure you can see a ray ae is incident on the face pq at the angle of incidence i so what does it happen when light enters the glass slab you can see that it will bend towards the normal why does it bend towards the normal it's because when a ray of light enters from a rarer medium to denser medium it bends towards the normal and after bending towards the normal it will travel along ef at an angle of refraction r now there is an incident ray there is a refracted ray and the refracted ray ef is incident on the face sr at an angle of incidence r dash so the emergent ray fd will bend away from the normal at an angle of refraction e so the, there will be incident ray refracted ray as well as emergent ray so you can see the emergent ray will fd will be parallel to the incident ray a but even though there are they are parallel there is a lateral displacement with respect to the incident ray so emergent ray fd will be parallel to the incident ray a but the difference is that there will be a small shift or a lateral displacement so this shift in the path of light as the light emerges from a refracting medium with the parallel face is based on the refraction through a glass slab so from this figure it is clear that the incident ray is ae the refracted ray is ef and the emergent ray will be fd so if you analyze the ab as the incident ray and fd as the emergent ray and if we extend the incident ray by dotted lines you can see that the emergent ray and incident ray will be parallel to each other but there is a lateral displacement so angle of i equals angle of incidence angle of r equals angle of refraction and angle e equals the emergent angle so next one is a formula that is related to the lens and we can infer the question a 6 cm tall object is placed perpendicular to the principal axis of a convex lens of focal length 15 cm so distance of the object from the lens is 10 cm find the position size and nature of the image form using the lens formula so whenever you are given a question related to the problems we need to identify which are the given quantities and we need to identify which is the formula connecting this basic quantities so what are the quantities that are given in the question already it is given that the focal length is 15 cm isn't it and since it is for a convex lens the focal length will be taking the positive sign and the object is 
distance is given as 10 centimeter. So, we can take u equals minus 10 centimeter. Why it is minus 10? Because the length in when we consider the magnification or when we consider the sign convention, the object will be placed on the left side of the lens, isn't it? So, whenever we are considering the center of the lens, when we consider the distances which is on the right side, we will consider it as positive and when it is measured the left side, it will be considered as negative. So, u is taken as minus 10 centimeter. So, what is the basic lens formula? 1 by f that is 1 by focal length equals 1 by v minus 1 by u. So, u means object distance. What was v? v is the image distance and f is the focal length. So, we have basic two quantities that is u and f. So, we can easily find the third quantity that is v or the image distance, isn't it? So, we need to substitute the quantities that has already given. So, 1 by f equals 1 by 50 equals 1 by v minus 1 by minus 10. So, we have substituted for the values of f as well as u. So, we need to find what is v, isn't it? So, when we rearrange the equation, you will get as 1 by v minus 1 by minus 10. So, minus and minus becomes plus. So, 1 by 15 equals 1 by v plus 1 by 10. So, now we need to find v, isn't it? So, we need to take the v itself into a separate quantity or separate session. So, we make the numericals on one side and the unknown quantity on the other side. So, you will get 1 by v equals 1 by 15 minus 1 by 10. So, when we take the LCM and do the mathematical things, you will get 1 by 15 minus 1 by 10, which would give you the denominator LCM as 30 and the numerator as 2 minus 3. So, 1 by v equals minus 1 by 30. So, 1 by v equals minus 1 by 30. So, what would be v? We need to just take the reciprocal you will get v as minus 30 centimeter. So, you can find that the image will be formed on the same side of the object at a distance of 30 centimeter when we consider the center of the lens. So, in case of center of lens, we take it as a optical center, isn't it? So, the image will be formed on the same side of the object at a distance of 30 centimeter from the optical center of the lens. State the type of mirror preferred as rear view mirror in vehicles and shaving mirror. So, justify your answer giving two reasons in each case in case of convex as well as concave mirror. So, that is the first part of the question. So, which is the mirror which is used as a rear view mirror? It is the convex mirror. Why is it used? Because it gives a wider field of view as it is curved outwards. We know that. A concave mirror will be curved inwards and a convex mirror will be curved outwards. And also, the convex mirror is able to produce erect as well as diminished image of the traffic behind the driver when he is running the vehicle. That's why the convex mirror is used in case of vehicles as the rear view mirror. The second part of the question was, which is the type of mirror which is used as the shaving mirror? Isn't it? So, which is the mirror which is used for shaving purposes? It is the concave mirror. And why is it used? We know the basic property of concave mirror that they are the converging mirror, isn't it? So, they will be able to converge the rays of light and give a larger size or image of the face, isn't it? So, concave mirror is used as the shaving mirror to see a larger size of the image of the face. So, when the object lies in between the pole and the principal focus of the concave mirror, it will form a virtual, erect and enlarged image of the object behind it. That's why the concave mirror is used as a shaving mirror. So, we can move on to the second part of the question. The radius of curvature of a convex spherical mirror is 1.2 meter. So, how far away from the mirror? It is an object of height 12 centimeter. The distance between its virtual image and the mirror is 0.35 meter. So, we are asked also to find what is the height of the image. So, we are given certain quantities that is the radius of curvature as 
1.2 meter. So converting it into centimeter, you will get it as 120 centimeter. So the focal length will be minus 60 centimeter. How do you get it? Because we know that R equals 2F. So from that, since the radius of curvature is given as 120 centimeter, you can take the half of it as the focal length. So focal length equals minus 60 centimeter. Now we need to consider the mirror formula that is 1 by V plus 1 by U gives 1 by F. So what were this U, V and F? U means the object distance. What was V? V is the image distance and F denotes the focal length. So we are already given certain quantities in our question itself as the hints to find the third unknown quantity that is V is given as minus 35 centimeter and we have found minus 60 centimeter as a focal length. So substituting in the basic equation you will get 1 by minus 35 plus 1 by U gives 1 by minus 60. So the unknown quantity that we need to find is the object distance. So we bring the known quantities to one side and the unknown one which we need to find on the other side. So you will get by rearranging the equation as 1 by u equals 1 by 35 minus 1 by 60. So taking the LCM of both the quantities and rearranging you will get 1 by u equals 12 minus 7 by 420. So 1 by u we will get a value and to get u what you will do? You will take the reciprocal and you will get u by doing the mathematical calculation as 84 centimeter. We are also asked to find what is the image height, isn't it? So image height can be obtained as 12 by 84 into 35. So what is it denoting that 84 is the u or the object distance. So 12 by 84 into 35 will give you 5 centimeter. So the image height will be 5 centimeter. A student focuses the image of a candle flame which is placed at 2 meter from the convex lens of focal length 10 centimeter on a screen. After that he moves gradually the flame towards the lens and each time focuses its image on the screen. So the first question is what happens to the size of the image of the flame which is formed on the screen? And second one is what difference is seen in the intensity or brightness of the image of the flame on the screen? And third one is what is seen on the screen when the flame is very close that is about 5 cm of the lens. So what happens to the size of the image of the flame which is formed on the screen? You can see that the size of the image will be increased. It is because here we use the convex lens. So in that case when we consider the position of the object the image size will increase. So next one is what difference is seen in the brightness of the image of the flame which is obtained on the screen. You know that when the object is placed once and when the image is formed on the screen in case of convex lens according to this question what will be happening to the intensity. You can see that the intensity or brightness of the image will be decreasing but the size will be increasing. So which is the third question that is what is seen on the screen when the flame is very close that is this said that about 5 cm to the lens. In such a case when the flame is very much close that we can be able to obtain much on the screen whether we will be able to find a distinct image that is a basic question. You know that when it is seen that the flame is very close that is beyond a particular distance that is not obtained on the screen you can see that no distinct image will be formed only certain patches of light or blurred image will be formed. So a distinct image will not be formed in such a place where the flame is very much close or too much close than the desired formula. So the next question is regarding the basic questions related to the refraction of light and certain numerical formula that is regarding the refraction of light. So since they are the final questions they need a little more 
briefing and elaboration. So state the laws of refraction of light that defines the refractive index of a medium with respect to other. So we know what is basically the refraction. Here they are asking to state the laws of refraction of light. So we need to express it mathematically and how is the refractive index of any medium with respect to any other medium B. That is we are considering two mediums that is A with respect to B related to speed of propagation of light in two media that is A and B. So that is we need to state the name of the constant when one medium is vacuum or air. So the second part of the question is a numerical problem that is the refractive index of glass and water with respect to vacuum are 3 by 2 and 4 by 2 respectively. So the speed of light in glass is given as 2 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. We are asked to find the speed of light in vacuum as well as water. So we can analyze the first part of the question that is to state the laws of refraction of light. So which is the basic law that is connecting the laws of refraction of light when considering the medium A and medium B it is the Snell's law of refraction isn't it that is the ratio of sine of angle of incidence that is sine I to sine of angle of refraction sine R is always a constant. And what was that constant? That is called as refractive index n, isn't it? So here they are giving specifically that is two media that is A and B. So mathematically you will write sin i by sin r equals a constant that is n. But here we, we need to specify with what respect to medium. So second medium with respect to first. So the constant n to 1 will be called as refractive index of second medium with respect to the first medium. This defines the Snell's law of refraction. So here they are given specifically two mediums that is A as well as B. So we need to design it according to the formula. So refractive index of medium A with respect to medium B will be represented as n a b just like n to 1 that is second medium with respect to 1 as n to 1 a with respect to b can be written as n a b so how is it related to speed of light that they are asking isn't it so we know the basic formula n equals c by v isn't it that is speed of light in air or vacuum with respect to speed of light in the medium so n a b equals speed of light in medium b with respect to speed of light in medium a which gives us n a b equals v b by v a because speed of light in air or vacuum is always a constant isn't it what was that value it is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second that is common for everyone so when we take the other values you will get the reciprocal so n a b equals VB by VA instead of VA by VB. So here they are also asking to specify if one of the medium is vacuum or air. So such a case we need to find the general formula isn't it. So we have already stated that in case of general formula if one of the medium is vacuum or air then we can state it as NM. What does this NM represent? That is refractive index of the medium or the material. So refractive index of the medium can be written as speed of light in air or vacuum to speed of light in the medium that is C by V. So N equals C by V or specifically you can write it as NM that is refractive index of the medium equals C by V. So the second part of the question is already a problem. So you are given that refractive index of the glass is 3 by 2 and refractive index of water which is represented by NW as 4 by 3. And you are also given that speed is in case of glass is 2 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. So you are asked to find the speed in case of water as well as what is C that is in case of in this particular formula how will you find C. So we know that n equals the basic formula C by V, isn't it? So n in case of glass, we need to have that ng equals C by V. But 
we are already given ng what does this ng represent ng means the refractive index of the glass so ng is already given as in case of the particular problem or in case of the equation that it is 3 by 2 so we need to find the other properties in case of the right hand side of the equation so when we substitute the already given quantities you will be able to find which is already known to you but they are asking to find it through the problem so ng equals c by v so for ng you can substitute c you don't know and for v you can substitute it as 2 into 10 raised to 8 2 into 10 raised to 8 is the v corresponding to the glass or speed in case of glass so c on substituting the other quantities you will get and mathematically solving as 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second but the fact is that you already know that c is always 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second isn't it that is speed of light in vapor but you need to show it through the equation or how it is relating to spe speed in case of the glass so now we need to find the other quantities in case of speed of light relating to the water so that is in case of second one that is refractive in the water also this general formula is c by v but here the v will correspond to water or we can write specifically as vw isn't it so when we take ng you have to take as vg that is speed of light in glass and refractive index of the glass here when we take vw that is speed of light in water you will take the refractive index of water but c will be always a constant whether it be any media so second part is nw equals c by vw the nw is already given us 4 by 3 isn't it so c you have got it as 3 into 10 raised to 8 but in this case a second one you are not given the speed of glass sorry the speed of light in case of the water isn't it so here instead of c you need to find the speed in case of water so you are already given the other quantities you for, to find the unknown quantity you just rearrange the equation and you will get the final quantity that is desired or asked in the formula that is vw that is speed of light in water equals 9 by 4 into 10 raised to 8 on rearranging the equation and the final answer you will be getting as vw that is the speed of light in case of water is 2.25 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second so the basic formula you have to remember here is n equals c by v so if you are given glass you have to take ng as well as vg if you are given water you have to take nw as well as vw because c or speed of light in vacuum is constant for all medium so you the only quantity that are changing is n that is the refractive index of the medium as well as speed of light in that particular medium so according to the question you need to change and do the mathematical equation so the basic formula is n equals c by v or refractive index of a medium is speed of light in air or vacuum by speed of light in the medium let's sign conventions that are followed in case of refraction light through spherical lenses draw a data and apply the sign conventions in determining the nature and focal length of the spherical lens which forms three times the magnified image of the object which is placed 16 centimeter from the lens so first of all we need to find what are the sign conventions for the fraction of light through the spherical lens and second part of the question you are asked to find to draw a diagram and apply the sign conventions along with that mathematical draw so the basic sign conventions that apply to the spherical lenses are the object will be always placed at the left of the lens so that instant light will move from left to right so as you can see from the figure the object is always placed to left of the lens and the image in most of the cases will be formed in the other side or right side of the lens and all the distances will be measured from the optical center of the lens you know the center of the lens will be optical center which is denoted by O whereas in case of mirror it will be denoted by O or capital A so from the figure that is clear that the distances which are measured in the direction of incident light that is a positive x axis will be taken as positive 
while those patients with a lack of the origin will be taken as negative and it will be along the negative axis. And when we consider the height of the image and height of the object form, we consider the base or the standard preference of the principal axis. So, all the measurements of height which is formed above the principal axis, that is, along the positive y axis, will be considered as positive. Whereas, the measurements of height which is formed below the principal axis, that is, along the negative y axis, will be taken as negative. So, the next question in the same part is that we are asked to find a numerical question. That is, it is given that. The three times magnified the image of the object is placed in the 16 centimeter from the lens. So it is already given that the object is placed 16 centimeter from the lens and a three times magnified the images are formed. So two columns are given and we are asked to find the nature and focal length of the particular spherical lens. So according to the question, it is given that object is placed 16 centimeter from the lens. Since the object is placed on the left side of the lens, then take u as minus 16 cm and you have found that magnification is 3 times, isn't it? Since it is a regular image, you do not have that minus 3. So, we are given two basic quantities that is f as well as u and you are asked to find v that is the image distance. So, from the basic formula for spherical lenses, you will get as m equals v by u. That is, when we take the ratio that is minus 3 and 16 and when we substitute in the equation, we will get V equals M into U. So, then, so you already know that M is given as minus 3 and U is given as minus 16. So, minus 3 into minus 16 will give you V as 48 centimeter. So, we are asked to find the focal length as the final one. So, then, so you have got u and you have got v from the given quantities through mathematical solving. So now we have to find f. So you know the basic lens formula 1 by f is 1 by v minus 1 by u where u gives the object distance and v gives the image distance. So when you substitute you will get 1 by f equals 1 by 48 minus 1 by minus 16. So minus 1 by minus 16 give you plus. So 1 by 48 plus 1 by 16. So 1 by f equals when we take the LCM and multiply it in the numerical session to get it at the same, you will get 1 plus 3 by 48 is 4 by 48. So when you cut short the power factors, you will get it as in the simplest form as 1 by 12. So 1 by m gives you 1 by 12. So focal length will be 12 centimeter. We will take the reciprocal. In the question, we are also asked to draw a ray diagram based on the quantities that is obtained. So in the lens, we will be having a optical center of lens, focus as well as 12. So focal length we have found out as 12 centimeter, isn't it? So according to that, we have draw a diagram. The positive sign of focal length will show that it will be a convex lens. So then, so positive sign is in case of lens it will be a convex lens. So we need to find it using a right diagram. You can draw a convex lens, and here the object will be placed in between f and two other, and denoted as a b. The focal length will be twelve centimeter, and you know the object is. 16 cm away from the center. So then, and the image distance is 48 cm. So it will be beyond 12. So it obeys the basic law that when the object is placed between F and 12, then the image will form on other side of the lens beyond 12, and that will be of a enlarged size. List the sign conventions for refraction of light by spherical mirrors. Draw a diagram and apply these conventions in determination of focal length of a spherical mirror. Here, it is given that three times the magnified real image of the object is placed in the 16 centimeter in front of it. 
that is the object will be placed 16 centimeter in front of it and three times a magnified real image is formed when compared to the object. So the first part of question we need to state the sign conventions for reflection of light by spherical mirrors. So there are sign conventions for reflection of light by spherical mirrors as well as refraction of light by spherical lenses. So here we are asked to find sign conventions for reflection of light by the spherical mirrors. So as you can infer from the figure the object will be always placed to the left of the mirror and all the distances parallel to the principal axis are always measured from the center of the spherical mirror which is denoted as P. And when we consider all the distances will be measured along the direction of incident light along the positive x axis as the positive one and those distances which are measured opposite to the direction of incident light that is along negative axis will be taken as negative. So if we consider one as a center that is here in case of spherical mirrors the center is taken as the pole or P. So those which is considered to the right side that will be considered as positive ones and those considered to the left of that particular center or pole of the mirror is considered as negative. So the distances which are measured in upward direction. So here the standard one is the principal axis. So now to consider the height of image or height of object we take the standard one or we take the reference as the principal axis isn't it. So the distances which are measured in upward direction or above the principal axis that is along the positive y axis are taken as positive. And what will be the in case of the other one? If the object or the image is formed as a distance measured in the downward direction that is along the negative y axis and it will be perpendicular to and below the principal axis will be taken as negative. So if this is a principal axis if an object or image is formed on a direction which is above the principal axis that will be positive which is below the principal axis in the inverted position will be taken as negative that you can easily infer from the particular figure. So second part of the question is asked to find the focal length of the spherical mirror in which three times a magnified real image is formed an object is placed 16 centimeter in front of it. So from the question u is given as minus 16 centimeter and m equals minus 3 since it is a real image form. So in case of spherical mirror the equation connecting magnification and object and image distance is m equals minus v by u whereas in case of lens it will be m equals v by u. So m equals minus v by u so we already know that m is minus 3. Send it. And V is not given but we have to find. So minus 3 equals minus V by U you will get. So on both sides since there are there is a common sign that is minus you can cancel it. Then you will get it as V equals 3 times U. U is already given as minus 16. So V equals 3 times minus 16 which gives you minus 48 centimeter. Now you have already got what is V that is the image distance as minus 48 centimeter and u that is object distance as minus 16 centimeter. Now you can easily find what is f by using the basic mirror formula 1 by f equals 1 by v plus 1 by u. You already know what is the image distance that is v as plus the object distance that is u. So 1 by f equals 1 by minus 48 plus 1 by minus 60. So we need to find the 1 by f. So 1 by minus 48 minus 1 by 16 you can write. So then, so now you have to take the LCM of 48 and 16 in the denominator and you will get it as 48. So in order to match it in the numerator what you will do? You will multiply it with the factors so that they will be getting equal to the that of the LCM in the denominator. So 1 by minus 48 minus 1 by 16 when you take the LCM you will get the denominator as 48. So 48 into 1 gives 48 in case of first one and the same way you multiply in the numerator. 
in case of minus 1 by 16, 16 into 3 gives 48 as the denominator. So, the same 3 we will be multiplying in the numerator. So, finally you will get minus 1 minus 3 by 48 gives minus 4 by 48. So, cancelling the common terms you will get minus 4 by 48 in the least form or in the simplest form of minus 1 by 12. So, we have got focal length as minus 12 centimeter. So, the focal length of a spherical mirror is minus 12 centimeter. So, the negative sign of focal length will indicate that the mirror is a concave mirror or a converging mirror. So, accordingly you can draw the ray diagram by using a concave mirror denoting the pole or center of the mirror as P, F as the focal length, C as the center of curvature. So, we have already found focal length is 12 centimeter and the object is placed in U as 16 centimeter and V as that is the image as 48 centimeter away from the pole of the mirror on the same side of the object. So, when you draw the ray diagram you will get it as the object will be placed between C and F the object is when the object is at C and F between you will get the image beyond C on the same side of the object. So, that is the F equals 12 centimeter, U equals 16 centimeter and the V will be in the 48 centimeter away from the pole of the mirror. So, when the object is placed in between C and F of a mirror that is corresponding to a spherical mirror, the image is formed beyond C on the same side of the object, but it will be formed in an inverted position and it will be also enlarged one as you can see in the figure. Draw the ray diagram in each case to show the position and nature of the image formed when the object is placed at different position. So, first one is when the object is placed at the center of curvature of the concave mirror. So, as you can see in the figure a concave mirror is formed as in case of the picture and the different quantities like C the center of curvature, F the focus and P the pole of the mirror are being marked as C, F and P. And now we are asked to find where the image is formed. So, you can see from the figure that AB denotes the object, isn't it? So, object is placed at the center of curvature. So, we are placing the object at center of curvature and what happens after reflection from this particular concave mirror? You can see that the from the object the rays of light will be falling on the mirror and after reflection it will be passing through the focus and where is the final image formed? That is the question. So, the object is placed at the center of curvature and rays of light will be going from this object. So, one ray of light will be passing through the focus and it after reflection will be meeting with the ray which is already going through the focus after reflection. So, at center of curvature when the object is placed, when you join both these rays, not only two rays are being coming from the object, but we denote only two rays. So, one will be going and hitting the mirror and will be after reflection will be passing through the focus, whereas another one will be directly passing through the focus and which is hitting in the downside of the mirror. So, the simple thing is that the object is placed in center of curvature. So, rays after reflection from the bottom side as well as the top side of the mirror will be going through the focus and will be meeting together at the center of curvature itself, but it will be formed below the principal axis. So, you can see the image is also formed at center of curvature itself below the principal axis. And you can see that such an image will be an inverted but size of the image will be same and it will be a real one which is formed at the center of curvature itself. So, second part is when the object is placed between the pole that is P and focus of the concave mirror where is the image formed. So, from the diagram you can see a concave mirror is being drawn. So, you have already marked the pole center of curvature as well as the focal that is relating to the spherical mirror. So, you ask that the object is placed between F and P. So, you are placing the object A, B between F and P and you can see that the rays from the object will strike the mirror and after reflection what happens? 
you will see that when you extend the rays to the other direction or other side of the mirror the image will be formed on the other side of the mirror as a dash b dash so the nature of the image here formed as you can see will be a virtual enlarged as well as erect image but where is the image form you can see object is placed in front of the mirror but whereas the image is formed behind the mirror so the third part is we have to draw the ray diagram if the object is placed in front of a convex mirror so here we are asked to find in front of a convex mirror how it is happening so we are drawing a convex mirror what is the difference between concave and convex mirror a concave mirror is curved inwards whereas a convex mirror is curved outwards so a convex mirror is being drawn and we are asked to find how the image is formed when the object is placed in front so convex mirror is being drawn an object is placed in front of the convex mirror so what happens after reflection you can see the reflected rays after hitting the particular spherical convex mirror and when we extend them you can see an image is formed behind the mirror on the other side and what is the nature of the image you can see it will be a virtual one which cannot be obtained on the screen at the same time when we compare to the size of the object the size of the image formed will be diminished or small one and it will be also a erect one and the image will be formed behind the mirror so next one is if the object is placed in case of a convex lens we are asked so when the object is placed at 2f of a convex lens where is the image formed so when the object is placed here in the 2f of a convex lens we know in case of lens on both sides there are f as well as 2f so when the object is placed two of of lens as ab the rays will be going from the particular object and after passing through the lens they undergo refraction and what happens the image will be formed on the other side of the lens after we meet together the refracted light light rays then they will be joined together so that we get an image at a dash b dash in an inverted position at two of itself so when object is placed at two f in case of lens then we will get the image is also formed at two f but it is on the other side of the lens here the object is placed on one side and the image is formed on the other side what is the nature you will see the image formed will be same size but the real and inverted size will be found so the next part is when the object is placed in front of a concave lens so as you can see we have drawn a concave lens and marked the different parts like optical center f as well as 2f so the object is placed in front of the concave lens so let it be on any position so when the object is placed in front of the concave lens the rays of light will be coming from the object ab and after when it is hit it, the other side that is in case of a concave lens when it hit the concave lens after refraction the light rays will come together and form the image at a dash b dash and where is it formed you can see a virtual erect that is upright or standing straight image is formed but when we compare the image and the object the image formed will be a small one or diminished one and where is the object and where is the image formed when the object is placed in front of the concave lens the image is formed between optical center of the lens and focus and it will be on the same side of the object so the next question is it is desired to obtain an erect image of the object using a concave mirror of focal length 20 cm what should be the range of the distance of the object from the mirror will the image be bigger or smaller than the object draw a ray diagram to show the image formation in this case so the range of the object distance is 0 to 20 cm from the pole and how the image will be formed the image formed will be bigger than the object this can be obtained easily from the ray diagram that is it is said that we have to obtain erect image of the object using a concave mirror of focal length 20 cm so they are asking what should be the range of distance 
So the range should be between 0 to 20 centimeter from the pole, then only we can obtain an image. So here after drawing the ray diagram, you will see the object is placed in between F and P according to the quantity that is given in the question. And when the ray diagram is being completed, after reflection, you will get an image which is formed on the other side of the concave mirror in an erect as well as enlarged position on the other side and it is also a virtual one. And the second part of the question is that one half of a convex lens of focal length 20 cm is covered with a black paper. And first question is will the lens produce a complete image of the object? So the formation of image of an object when which is placed as 2F1 of such one which is covered lens with the help of a ray diagram. The third one is how will the intensity of image found by half covered lens compared with the non covered lens. So first question is whether the complete image will be formed when we cover the half of a convex lens with a black paper. Yes of course a complete image will be formed. The second one is the ray diagram which is showing that is when the object is placed at 2F1 of such a covered lens where will the, the image form. You can see when the object is placed at 2F1 then the image is also formed in the 2F1 but on the other side of the lens which is having same size but a in case of a inverted position which is a real one. And next one is how will the intensity different in case of a covered convex lens and an uncovered convex lens. You will see that the intensity will be reduced or diminished as the light falling on the lower side or the covered portion will not reach the position of image. So the image will be found but the intensity of the image will be less because in the covered position of the convex lens from there the light will not be reaching. So the position of the image will be formed at 2F1 itself and the complete image will be formed but the intensity of the image will be less when compared to the covered lens image that is formed.